welcome back to the Blue Studio. And today I'm here with a brand new video for you guys. We're going to be talking about When Calls the Heart, Season 8, Episode 8, titled A Parade in a Charade. And I'm here with my mom, Stacy. Thanks for joining me. Hi, guys. So this is actually our second time recording this. The first time we had some editing errors, so we had to delay it. Um, but this is finally coming out to you guys. We didn't want to have to wait to get more feelings about this, because this was a pretty jam-packed episode. Um, and hopefully next week we'll be back on track with our Tuesday releases for these recordings so um but we did watch the episode um and we thought or i my thoughts were is that it was a better episode i think that i'm more i think that the triangle stuff finally came to a point where now i'm more intrigued because for a while there i was just kind of like annoyed with it but now i think i'm intrigued to see it going forward with nathan's secret being revealed at the end but all the other subplots specifically I found the Christopher one interesting, him and Gowan, and, you know, um, I find, like, Elizabeth teaching Angel how to read Braille, things like that. I think that it makes the show, a, a, like, very enjoyable. So what did you think of the episode? Definitely thought that it was a better episode than some of the last few, so, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. anxious to chat a little bit about them. Okay, so I wanted to say, we're going to start out with talking about Elizabeth trying to teach Angel how to read Braille. So I've been I've been enjoying this because I think that Angela is a good addition. The Canfields have been a good addition to Hope Valley, but Angela specifically, you know, they brought in a blind character. They've done it the right way, and they've done it by doing it in a very interesting way of teaching them to read a different way. And the thing is that Elizabeth's not experienced with it, but she's learned to do it because of Angela. And I've never seen her this passionate about a student before because I think that she has genuine she has genuine desire to want to help this girl and i think that it's nice even though she's involved in this whole love triangle thing for her to still be able to help kids out do you like that she's teaching her definitely i mean it definitely showed um, elizabeth's passion for teaching kids and sometimes that feels like that gets pushed to the side burner so that was really cool and it's just it's neat that she's learning braille right along with angela and she's opening up a whole new world for angela by teaching her how to read this yeah. way so pretty mm -hmm. cool yeah um, and also, um, Joseph and Minnie have some conversations. With, we finally get to see them kiss. Um, and we kind of see, like, you know, Joseph obviously has some flaws. He's not the perfect character. Where some people thought he was completely perfect, but, you know, he has some flaws that are being introduced. And he's still struggling with what is he going to do. Because Minnie kind of persuaded him to kind of go against the church, the preacher idea. Um, because she kind of said that's a family decision. And I think that, you know, she's, Minnie's still trying to get comfortable laying down roots in Hope Valley, and maybe her working at the ca cafe will help that. Um, but I think that she doesn't want Joseph, like, she wants him to be happy. Um, but I think she's still struggling with the idea of him becoming a pastor. And maybe there's still some backstory about that. But what do you think of that whole thing? Yeah, well, I'm not real sure that I took it that way, but we'll see. Um, I, I definitely see Joseph struggling with his calling and thinking he wants to do something bigger and grander. And to me, I think Minnie already has it figured out. He just hasn't quite figured it out yet. So, But mm -hmm. I, could be, I could be wrong. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of thinking she, she knows what his calling is and where he needs to be. And um, she thinks Hope Valley is going to be a good fit for that. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I think we'll just have to wait and see. Because yeah. I think that Minnie is like a complex character from what we've seen so far. Like We don't know which side she's leaning towards. I do think she's going to end up supporting her husband at the end. But I think we're just going to have to wait and see, like, the steps that take that. Because I don't think she's, like, a bad guy or anything. What I was saying by my point is that I'm not sure if, like, you know, I think that she wants to do what's best with her husband. But I think that she doesn't want to get, like, she doesn't want to, like, persuade him in, like, the wrong way. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and I think that so far we've kind of seen, like, things like, little comments like, people might think that you are foolish for praying in, like, the woods and things like that that maybe question her a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it was just like a little comment, but yeah. I still think, you know, I, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe like she is, seems like she's had different comments since then, but I think it's interesting to see her view of him as a pastor. I just think that there might be something. I don't know. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about was the whole um, Christopher thing. Um, we kind of see him and Gowan's relationship develop because Gowan has a health scare this episode in his office and Christopher blamed Lucas for it because Lucas kind of invited Gowan to come back and work for, you know, um, the plays, the, um, Bed, not Bedford, not Bedford, well, I don't even remember the name anymore, Gowan Petroleum. 
Um, and um, I think that what the problem here is, is that everyone has a little bit of blame in it. Because, like, you know, Gowan should be trying to take better care of himself, which I think by the end of the episode he's going to. Um, and, like, Christopher shouldn't have been so harsh to Lucas, and Lucas probably shouldn't have let Gowan kind of, like, take back, you know, the reins, especially because Lucas knew he was having health issues. So whose side are you taking in this argument? Well, I don't know if I'm going to take a side, per se. I, I mean, I feel like, you know, Henry has to answer for his own self, ultimately. So if he felt like he couldn't handle it, he should have just said so. Mm -hmm. So I, that's kind yeah. of my stay, take on yeah. that. But we get this really sweet moment with, um, well, uh, Gowan's talking to Carson. And pretty much uh, Gowan says that when he collapsed, Christopher said, Dad, what is it? And it finally felt like he was like, Christopher liked him. So that will be interesting to see their father-son relationship mm -hmm. develop yep. moving forward. Because, you know, I think that Gowan has lived in a life with so much sadness, I feel like. And I think that he needed that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we're going to get to see hopefully a good side of Gowan now. I'm hoping that there's not anything, like, suspicious, more suspicious with him. Although it's Gowan, so you never mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Christopher there helps him out. Because we don't know if there... I mean, I think we like Christopher a little bit more this episode than the previous one. Mm -hmm. It seems like he has true feelings for Rachel, which we'll go ahead and get to. Pretty much, they share a first kiss, and they're kind of, like, flirting. Um, and, like, you know, he's... Rosemary kind of intimidates him a little bit, which I thought was funny. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of, like, leaves them alone, and Rachel's kind of embarrassed by Rosemary and Lee, which I think that's kind of, like, a typical thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's not even her real parents, and she has to, like, deal with Rosemary, who's a pretty intimidating person, kind of, like, shooing Christopher <laughs> off. Um, but we get, get another moment with Christopher and Rachel where, like, you know... Um, I don't necessarily remember the conversation that well, but we kind of, he, she does say that, well, Christopher says that he kind of feels left out and he's kind of confused on where he needs to be. And Rachel says that, you know, I th she wants to be with him and they share another kiss. So they're kind of kind of dating, but, um, the ending, we see that, um, Rachel leaves and Christopher doesn't get there in time. Yeah. So what do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, definitely seems like there's the beginnings of a budding relationship. And, um, yeah, you could see that he was really hurt, that um, he missed her. She was hurt. You saw, saw her looking back, looking for him, thinking for sure he'd show up. So I imagine there's still going to be some more things that go on with that relationship. I'm sure she'll time. be back at some point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to also talk about... Um, Bill and Molly. So Bill has to return his red surge. Um, and I think that he's struggling with, with that because that's a part of his life that I think was more one of his highlights. Mm -hmm. I think he did really enjoy that. And ever since he's been back in Hope Valley, he's enjoyed his time as a judge. But he, you know, I he think he misses the Mountie, so he mm -hmm. has to give up a part of his life. And word gets around town that he's has to give it up. And, Mo and Molly is the one who has a conversation with him saying that he needs to try it on because it'll fit and he shouldn't have to feel like he needs to give up that part of his life because he'll always remember something to him. But what I thought was funny was like Molly's like, word travels faster on town. I'm like, that's so <laughs> gossip Molly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but what did you think of um, Bill's little storyline? I liked it. I, you know, it's the being a Mountie was something he was um, very proud of and um, wearing that um, Mountie um, jacket meant something to him. So it was neat that they kind of um, commemorated and honored him before he had to return that. So mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I think that was a, a, one of the... And because the ending scene where uh, Bill was on the horse and in his Mountie outfit was a really good scene, although it got interrupted by Elizabeth and Nathan's arguing. Mm -hmm. Poor Bill hasn't had a moment in mm -hmm. like eight seasons, a good moment, and it was still interrupted. But, mm -hmm. you know, I still thought it was really good mm -hmm. in the pictures. And I think Bill finally got his moment in some way. And I did really enjoy that. Uh, a few little things I want to talk about. First of all, Ned is on um, bed rest kind of at the mercantile and Florence has taken over. She assigns Robert to do mail. And uh, Ned feels like he's being replaced, but Florence reminds him that he is not replaced because Ned's like the character that we haven't seen him around really. Um, until then, until then, he's always been there. We just haven't dived into his story. And Florence, I did like that he can't be replaced because who else is going to run the mercantile? It says Yost Mercantile on the front, mm -hmm. so no one else can no one else can run it besides him. I did really think that it was good that she made him feel important. Would you agree? Definitely, yeah, I like yeah. that. Um, we also have 
and they're getting married in episode 10, I think. So next week is like the bachelor bachelorette parties. Mm-hmm. Episode 10 is the wedding, I think, is where they're going. Um, and I think there's two th- more, th- well, three more things. Jesse and Clara. Jesse's miserable without Clara. But by the end, we kind of see that they might move better on a path, although I'm not sure um, what's going to happen with the whole dress shop thing because I still want to know what Jesse did with all that money. Mm-hmm. And hopefully that will yeah. get revealed. That would be kind of like a wasted thing because of that very tense conversation if they just throw that away. Definitely. Um, but Joseph did say to Clara, first enjoy yourselves and then talk about money. Yeah. So that's probably the st- process that they'll go to. I think so. so it's good advice and yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, and then Carson and Faith. Now, I'm just kind of, like, annoyed with their whole thing, because mm. it's not that, like, I mean, I still think it's, like, an interesting storyline, because, like, I feel like distance has been their biggest struggle ever since we've seen them get together. I'm just annoyed with, um, how it seems like it's repeating over and over again, and I'm not even really seeing much chemistry between them anymore, really. I just think that what I'm struggling with, them um, is that, we don't know what they're thinking because at one point it sounds like Faith might go with Carson to Baltimore mm-hmm. and then Faith not interested in going to Baltimore yeah. because she thinks she's set down roots in Hope Valley. It just feels like they're going so back and forth and it looks like they might get married based on the promo for next week. Yeah. Um, but I'm just, I'm just struggling. I mean, I do get where Carson's saying that everything will be outdated and he wants to go to something bigger, which doesn't sound like the Carson we know. Yeah, I don't know. What do you, What do you think of this whole thing? Yeah, it actually, I've I have found it somewhat confusing. So it would be nice t- just that this gets resolved. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm ready to just see it resolved. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and if that's marriage, that's fine. Or if they separate, that's fine too. I don't think yeah. I have a feeling one way or the other on that one. I mean, I think that their chemistry is better at the beginning, but now because they're arguing all the time, they don't really have any sweet moments. It's annoying in my opinion yeah. and if they're arguing now they're going to argue later so yeah. hmm. <laughs> um last thing i want to talk about before we get to uh the triangle we have rosemary and lee the dress shop is not being sold so clara um and well rachel's now gone but maybe clara will take over the dress shop is what we're kind of thinking because rosemary and lee based on the conversation that they had with elizabeth elizabeth said if you can if I can sew, then you can parent, which I think kind of get Rosemary at least questioning more about her maybe having a baby or adoption because we, season eight could end with her announcing that she's pregnant or maybe they'll even get a, or even like adopt a baby by the end of the season. But I think they're really leaning in that direction. Would you agree? I think so, for sure. Yeah, and I'm really excited to see that because I think that Rosemary through pregnancy would be so funny. Yeah. Season nine, we're hoping for, mm-hmm. um, which ado- and adoption's fine too. I think that's yeah, still good because I want to see Rosemary parent. I think that she needs a child, and I think Lee would be really good with a child too because mm-hmm. he's they're so good with little Jack. Yep. Okay. Um. Okay. The triangle. So we're gonna talk about Lucas first because Elizabeth and Lucas had a lot of juicy scenes this episode. We got a lot of scenes in his office, and one scene they're talking French to each other, which is pretty funny. And then we see that he asks her out to dinner, but he has to decline later on because he's so upset about Christopher lashing out at him. And she's the one who invites him to come sit down next to her. Mm -hmm. And she holds his hand, which pretty bull moves for Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And then he almost kisses her. Um, But he's the one who realizes, she doesn't back off, he backs off and says, he's going to wait until the right time. He's going to be patient Mm -hmm. and he's going to, you know, tend to her needs as to when she's ready to do that. And then he kisses her hand and she leaves and she's in like in shock almost pretty much. I think saying that she's developing feelings for him and she just does has no idea what to do with it. So mm-hmm. what did you think of that moment? Oh yeah. I mean, I thought it was funny that, you know, she kind of was the one putting the moves on and then he backed off and, mm-hmm. and then we see her outside his door fanning herself. So you could tell she was getting a little hot and bothered by it all. <laughs> yeah. But, um, mm-hmm. I almost thought they were going to kiss. Mm-hmm. almost kind of wish that they kissed, but yeah. it's fine. It's fine. So the whole Nathan side of things, there has been a lot of... They had some conversations, too, that were interesting. First of all, the beginning scene where he tells her that Elizabeth's name wasn't on the adoption list was kind of mean, mm-hmm. but also Elizabeth has been so confusing at this point, and in my opinion, not very nice to Nathan. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she didn't choose him, obviously, mm-hmm. or she might, but... Based on the end, I don't think she's going to choose him. Yeah. We'll talk about the percentages in a second. <laughs> um, 
but we kind of see that Allie's sitting alone. Lucas tells Elizabeth that it's Nathan's responsibility to talk to her, uh, not Elizabeth's. Which, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, I could see that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And Lucas also just, he doesn't, he says he can accept a friendship between her and Nathan, which I'm not sure if he really needed to say that, but like, mm-hmm. I think he's still kind of jealous of what Nathan has to offer, which is understandable because Eli- Nathan and Elizabeth are still like, like acquaintances you know mm-hmm. i mean they're still yeah. like see each other around town and he still gives like hints that he still likes her which he obviously right. does exactly um but um we also see that um ally invites elizabeth to dinner but then when elizabeth declines because she reminds her that she's with lucas and then she Elizabeth says that she obviously can't go to dinner because that would look like her and Nathan are together and Allie's mm-hmm. their ch- child, mm-hmm. which we kind of saw at the end of the last episode. So then Allie rips up the dinner letter, and yeah, so what do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, it's just typical, you know, the child, she wants to see her uncle happy, and she likes Elizabeth, so it to naturally just makes sense to her mm-hmm. that they would get together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that, you know, I mean, it... A child shouldn't have to deal with that. She should get to have, like, a good mother, mm-hmm. which I think Elizabeth would be a good yeah. mother to her. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that Nathan is obviously, I think, is the better choice for her. But the ending soon we find out that he was, Jack was the one who replaced him in the Fort Clay mission because Nathan had a previous disciplinary thing he had to attend to. So, you know, it's not like, um, of course, on purpose, you know, Nathan's the reason that Jack died. It's definitely not that. But, like, you know think would have been different if Nathan did do the fourth play assignment, you know. So what do you think of that reveal? Yeah, I mean, you know, we kind of had talked about it before and you kind of called that, um, that that was what was going to happen. Um, yeah, I mean, we see Elizabeth just shocked and rightfully so. You know, it's a lot to process that Nathan has known this all along but hasn't shared it with her. So um, we're just, I'm just going to be curious to see what happens mm-hmm. as we move yeah. forward. Yeah. And I think that right now the chances are 60-40. 60% Lucas, 40% Nathan. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not like... Nathan obviously should have told her this way sooner. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm just excited to see what's going to happen. Yeah, me too. So anything else you want to say before we close? That's it. So anyways, um, only a few more days until episode 9. I'm excited for it. So anyways, thanks everyone for watching Movie Studio. Like, comment, subscribe, turn your post notifications, see you in video. Thanks for watching and bye.